Every film he does is a, a challenge for a new type of lighting. He discovered a searchlight that was used in the last war. It was enormous. I mean, it was, it must have been 10 feet across. And he brought this into the studio and used it as the main lighting source. Well, when it was switched on, it was, must have been like looking at the eclipse when the moon had gone. I mean, one was totally blinded. On the second night, I'm just getting out of my car and a kid about, I don't know, 12, 14, something like that, rides up on a bike and said, you're going to have that lamp again tonight, you see. And I said, uh, yeah, did you like it? I mean, he knew it. But he knew I was one of the film crew, didn't know it's my lamp. And he said, yes. He said, it was, you know, this time of year, midsummer. And he said, my bedtime's nine o'clock. He said, uh, he said, and I'd gone to sleep. He said, and then I woke up. He said, and it was outside my window. I thought it was a UFO. I think in Women in Love, Billy really captured the essence of uh, Lawrence's love of nature. Billy Williams' ability to interpret the mood required for a scene, his eye for detail and colour, and his love of lighting actors have become his trademark. My father was a cinematographer and so from a very early age, for as long as I can remember, I've been associated with, with film and cameras. Uh, my father started and entered the industry in 1910 and uh, he actually filmed the surrender of the German fleet at Scapa Flow at the end of the First World War. So when I left school I, I joined him as uh, his assistant, uh, working in um, documentary films and training films during the end of the war. But my ambition was always to um, get into feature films. And my first feature film in colour came along and I thought, hey, Billy would be terrific in this. And so Harry Saltzman was the producer of the Bond films. I'm lucky, I said, Harry, will you please look at this guy's showreel? And of course he did and he was blown away by it, terribly impressed. Uh, but he would never admit it, and he said reluctantly at the end of the showing, um, I'm going to give the boy a chance. I think working with Ken Russell was the big, the big break for me, with Billion Dollar Brain, which we shot at Pinewood and in Finland. And, um, I mean, I was really in the deep end, and I'd never worked in a major studio before, and uh, I found it quite daunting going onto these huge sets and wondering how I was going to... Um, photograph everything. I remember when I was uh, younger, going to see uh, uh, the Ken Russell films, I love Ken Russell, he was complete lunatic, but the visual uh, extravaganza of everything was uh, just amazing, and you think that, uh, I think all the things that he did with Billy Williams, Billy Williams must have been uh, completely on Ken's wavelength, because Ken's stuff actually subsequently, with all of his imagination, which is quite con considerable, never really was quite as good as the stuff he, he did with Billy Williams. Beautiful work, really brilliant. Women in Love in particular is, is a film with, with great richness of colour and the costumes and the design um, reflected that. We were looking for richness, we weren't looking for a muted, diffused look. And so it comes through as a very colourful film and uh, I think that that's one of its strengths. Birkin, played by Alan Bates, runs naked through the forest. And um, that was very tricky to light. And uh, he, he eventually comes out of the forest and and just rolls in the early morning dew of the grass. The grass, you know, it's that nice long sort of country meadow grass. And he wipes himself with the dew from this um, grass, which Billy beautifully backlit. It looks like molten gold. And uh, that's almost a, a throwaway um, device in a way. But I wonder how many other cameramen would have thought of that and done it, because it just, it brings magic to the scene. There was a particular scene 
uh, where Alan Bates and Oliver Reed are discussing marriage and their relationship to one another. And the Alan Bates character is, he, wa you know, he wants to be married, but he also wants a relationship with another man. And so he's got this, um, this dilemma. And we found this room that had three mirrors on, on each wall and one wall without a mirror. So we were able to shoot with reflections and have the image of the person repeated a number of times, which kind of added to the confusion that Alan Bates was in about what his sexuality was. And also, as luck would have it, one of these mirrors had a huge crack across it, which we used to effect. And I think the fact that we were able to shoot that scene in a room of mirrors adds to the quality of the scene. Um, but it was, it was a lucky, it was lucky because we hadn't planned to shoot it in a room of mirrors. It just happened to be there. There was a twilight scene where two newlyweds um, drown um, at a picnic, a, a, a great big party the, um, in honour of the wedding. And it looked really great at dusk when, when the Chinese lanterns were just beginning to spike through. I wanted to shoot this at the magic hour, which only lasted five or ten minutes. And that meant that we had to come back to that scene three times. We did it over three successive evenings, which was great. That the actors were willing to go back into the water and pick it up where they finished the night before. So I had a certain amount of daylight, which I made look a little bit cold and blue, so the water looked an inky blue-black. And then it was punctuated with, with lights from the Chinese lanterns. There are rowing boats with lanterns in them, and also lanterns in the distance where there's a fairground going on. And this highlighted the water and provided a contrast with the darkness so that you, know, you could appreciate what was going on. Billy is very sensitive um, to what's going on around him. And um, is particularly good with um, actors, particularly actresses. He makes all women look wonderful. Um, he has this old, I was going to say French knickers, but I think it's a, a French stocking uh, that he often puts over the lens to uh, act as gauze to soften all the lines away and, and make her look glamorous. Of course, the one big scene that people remember, perhaps, is the nude wrestling scene. <laughs> we, we were able to have this enormous fire. And um, the light from the fire provided the, the key light for the, um, for the action. There was a certain amount of anxiety and amongst the crew, I think. And Alan was very professional, very prepared. But I think Ollie was, was quite a bit nervous. And uh, I think he'd fortified himself with a certain amount of vodka before he came on set. And then when they both stripped off, uh, Ollie was absolutely mortified because he discovered that Alan was, uh, shall we say, rather better equipped <laughs> than he was. <laughs> and so he used to do run off into the corner and pretend to try, to try and improve matters a little and then come back and get on with the scene. But I think it was just a way of breaking the tension. Billy knew and I knew that that was the only lighting source, that great big log fire. And so um, he cracked it, he did it, you know, and um, I, I don't know if, if many could have equaled it. It was unique. I, I haven't seen anything to equal it, actually. Mm -hmm.